to the Sacramento Zoo Facebook Live today, Monday, and we are hanging out with some super cute tortoises. This Facebook Live is sponsored by Jiffy Lube of Greater Sacramento. We are so grateful to Jiffy Lube for helping us out here at the zoo. If you too are interested in helping the Sacramento Zoo out, feel free to visit saczoo.org to learn more about our emergency relief fund. And for those of you just joining us now, we are here brunching with some super cute tortoises. Look at all those little snacks. They're so cute. We're also here with their keeper. Hello, keeper. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Riley Jimison, and I'm the uh, reptile keeper here at the Sacramento Zoo. And uh, today we're hanging out with our three African spurified tortoises, also commonly called sulcatas. And uh, these are the largest mainland species of tortoise in the world. The only tortoises bigger than these individuals would be the Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises found in the islands uh, where they are found. So they're an island giant tortoise, but as far as mainland continents go, the African spur thighs wear that crown. Um, Very cool. Big males can get 200 pounds in rare occasions, but Bubba here is a, a great example of an adult male, and he's uh, just over 100 pounds. Wow. The yeah, guys, so we're here with our Salcata tortoises. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section, and we will try to get to your questions. Jaden, age 7, wants to know how hard are their shells? Their shells are as hard as rock and made of the same substance as your fingernails, which is called keratin. So it's like a really large, giant fingernail that's as hard as a rock. Ooh, very, very hard. All right, Addy, age 4, wants to know if they can swim. They can, actually. It's kind of silly to watch a tortoise swim because they don't do it very gracefully. But our middle tortoise here, Penelope, does enjoy going into her pool for a swim uh, during the warm weather. Yeah, we've got our pool over here. Very cute little Penelope pool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely looks like a delicious salad, Becky. Brooklyn, age five, wants to know why they walk so slow. They walk very slowly because they are processing everything, they're observing, they're thinking, and they're trying to figure out what to do. So the slower they go, the more they can take in. They're not predators, and they are certainly not prey animals at this size, but they do need to stay on high alert. So walking slowly and conserving energy allows them to take everything in their surroundings in at their speed. Awesome. So we got a few questions here from Charlotte and Sophie wanting to know how old they are and how long they live. So our two females on the left here, Vivian and Penelope, are going to be 22 years old this year. And the big guy Bubba here, we don't have its exact hatch date. And unlike uh, some rumors, you can't count the rings on their scoots to tell how old they are. But we can estimate that Bubba here, given his mature size, is at least about 40 years old. Wow. They can live 85 to 100 years, sometimes even longer. Cool. All right. They're loving this. Memphis, age six, wants to know, why do they hide in their shell? This shell, being very tough, is an excellent defense for them. So when they're younger and potentially have to worry about predators, this shell will protect them. It's basically like big armor. Nothing can get through this tough shell. Not even a large African lion that might encounter these guys in the wild would be able to make a meal out of an animal this tough and strong. Cool. So these guys are found in Africa. Yes, they are found in Africa, kind of across the, uh, the whole top of the continent. Um, very uh, sub-Saharan grassland species. They're essentially uh, a reptile equivalent of cows. So they do like to cruise around in the grassy fields in Africa, in the savannas, munching on grasses and weeds. And uh, they blend in with that dry grass that we, we've come to know and associate with Africa's savannas. Awesome. Well, for those of you just joining us, we are here with our Salcata tortoises having a little brunch here. A nice little salad. A brunch salad, I guess. 
Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And again, this Facebook Live is sponsored by Jiffy Lube of Greater Sacramento. We are so grateful to them for helping the zoo out and supporting us. If you too are interested in supporting the zoo, feel free to visit saczoo.org to learn more about our emergency relief fund. All right, Brooklyn, age five, would like to know if their heads are hard or soft. Uh, their heads are kind of like a, a soft leather around their ears and the chin, but around their the top of their skull, their nose, their beaks, and their eyes, it's pretty tough. And that's because they have to be able to keep that head protected. So they do have some tough skin uh, and some leathery skin around their neck as well. Very cool, huh? They're so cute. All right, Scarlet H4 wants to know, if you were to try to pet them, would they bite? No, tortoises are not known for being defensive or aggressive in using their mouths to bite. The only time you might uh, accidentally receive a bite from a tortoise is if they are being hand-fed and your finger gets too close. They love food and they get very excited for certain treats. So they will just blindly start grabbing and munching away with enthusiasm. And if your finger's in the wrong spot, they could end up having a, an accidental bite. But these guys are very gentle giants. Gentle giants. Very good. So I've seen a few questions about the shell, if they can um, kind of hide in their shell, yeah. kind of get completely enclosed. You want to kind of go over that? Yeah. So when they are scared, they can retract their heads into the shell. So if he's scared, he can push his head further, and these legs close up right there, block his head, and then he's got this nice armor plating that's the only area outside shown. So if they're scared or there's a predator, they retract. All that's left outside of the shell are these really tough armor scoots. So yeah, they pull their head and their legs in. Very cool. So what are some potential predators for these guys? Well, when they're this size, they have no natural predators. But when they're younger and they hatch out about the size of a golf ball, or even smaller for the first couple of years, they do have to worry about uh, lions uh, potentially being kicked around or, or stomped on by giraffes. Um, if they find themselves near uh, any leopard territory, that's potential as well. But anything bigger than uh, maybe a soccer ball, they're, uh, they're pretty tough to make a meal out of, so they're only vulnerable when they're young. All right, very cool. Well, thank you guys for checking in on our Facebook Live. If you're just joining us, we're here with Sopata Tortoises. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in our common area. And what are they eating today, Riley? What today they are watch? getting some dandelion greens, which they get uh, pretty much every day. It's a very low nutritional weed, which is very natural for them to eat, very similar to the grasses they would graze on in the wild. Today, I also gave them a little extra treat with some carrots and some broccoli on top. Bubba, the big guy here, personally, his favorite snack is broccoli. And carrots, we give them very sparingly. Um, you don't want to overdo it with too much uh, vegetable nutrition in there. But uh, today, for special occasion, they get a little snack. Nice. Carrots are quite yummy. Alright, let's see if we got some other questions here. Ellie H2 wanted to know if these guys have ever had babies at the zoo. No, they have not had any babies at the zoo, uh, which is a good thing. We don't want to have any babies of this species. These guys are uh, quite common outside of their natural habitat. So there are a lot of them as pets and in rescues and in zoos everywhere. So we don't need to breed in order to help the species as a whole. However, it still happens um, and uh, more need to be bred in the wild than, than in human care. Awesome. So you kind of touched upon the pet trade. So is that a threat to these guys in the wild? Yeah, these guys are listed as vulnerable. Um, their numbers aren't dramatically imperiled in the wild. However, um, over collection for the pet trade has made a, a, a big decline in their numbers. And uh, some of the habitat loss is an issue. When we're talking about the pet trade, 
if you breed one female African spurthite tortoise, she can have 30 to 40 eggs in a clutch, and if all 30 or 40 of those babies hatch out, that's a lot of animals that now need to find new homes. And if a lot of folks are breeding these animals uh, without maybe thinking about the, the long term for the, the future offspring, you find that you have a lot of animals that are without proper care or proper homes and end up in rescues or even worse, being abandoned out into an environment they don't belong in. Yeah, that would not be good for local ecosystems. Definitely not. Janelle is wondering if they have teeth. They do not have teeth. Their mouth is very similar to that of a bird's beak. It is sort of like a serrated edge, uh, and it's perfect for chopping through tough, dense vegetables and grasses. Cool. Jaden, age four, wants to know, what's the difference between a tortoise and a turtle? That's a great question. For the most part, tortoises are land-dwelling animals. They're terrestrial, and their feet are perfectly designed for walking around and climbing on land. Whereas turtles are typically the ones who live in the water and have very flipper or fin-like legs and feet, perfect for paddling and swimming through the water. Very nice. Great way to kind of tell the difference. Tristan, age four, wants to know why their shell is curved. So their shell is curved to allow some room for their legs to move around. These guys are actually pretty good at climbing. So if he's climbing up some rocky faces, having the ability to move his foot and position in certain ways gives him the leverage. These guys are very strong. So not only does this kind of protect them and look intimidating for armor, but having a little bit of leg room here allows him to move more freely. Damien, age four, wants to know if they live as long as other turtles, like sea turtles. Yeah, you know, um, every individual is different, but these guys can certainly live up to, if not more than 100 years old. Sea turtles, we don't know quite as much about because it's much harder to study those animals in the ocean versus these animals in a human care situation. But sea turtles can certainly live 100 years or even more as well. And we might find down the line that these animals live longer than we think currently. Cool. Alright guys, if you guys have any more questions about tortoises, feel free to leave them in the comment section. <laughs> I think we're tired from brunch. Very cute. And again, this Facebook Live was sponsored by Jiffy Lube of Greater Sacramento, which is super awesome. We definitely appreciate their support. If you would also like to support the zoo, feel free to visit saczoo.org and you can learn more about our emergency relief fund and donate there. And we also want to give a big shout out, um, Big Day of Giving was last week and that was just amazing. So thank you to the Sacramento community and to the Sac Zoo fans for uh, supporting us on Big Day of Giving. That was so awesome to see you guys support us. All right, one last question here. Karen wants to know if they have good eyesight. Yeah, these animals have excellent eyesight, and in fact, they can distinguish colors very, very well. Uh, and the best example I can give you of that is when it comes time to feed them. If I bring out uh, lots of green food items with something bright and orange like a carrot on it, they end up eating the carrot first because it's a little more colorful and enticing. So these animals will eat lots of grasses and weeds in the wild, but if you think of dandelions that grow yellow flowers or maybe some downed fruits and things that might uh, be found by these animals, the colorful items are often the very tasty, juicy treats like fruits or, or flowers and things. So they tend to prefer the brightly colored items and eat those first. And what that tells us is they have pretty good color vision. So these guys can see very well. Cool, that was a great question. All right, looks like we're full from brunch. <laughs> Maybe gonna take a little nap. Oh yeah. Thank you guys again for tuning in and supporting the Sacramento Zoo. We will be live again Wednesday at 11. So check us out then. Bye guys. Bye. See ya, Bye. thanks for coming. They're so cute.